Epilogue. 22nd April. My darling Alex. Reading between the lines, you sounded miserable in your last letter. How are you holding up? I want to hold you up, and never let you go. I promise I will do that for you, in whatever way I can, whatever happens. I know I keep saying this, but you never seem convinced so I will say it again, the truth will out darling. I'm sure that you won't end up prison. Emily couldn't possibly lie under oath. She'll realize that she can't punish you in that way, that she's playing with your life. I'm sure she'll come around. She's just relishing her impression of a roaring mouse for now, that's all. She'll calm down. I'm sorry that you ever met her. It's my fault. If I hadn't been so blind, and so weird with you when you first said you loved me, none of this would have happened. I drove you into her arms, and I feel terrible about that. Like I said the night before they took you away, I've always been slow on the uptake. I don't know why. I either choose the wrong man, Phil being a prime example, or, in your case, can't recognize a good thing when I see it. I mean, you bought me designer clothes, and I still turned you down. How mad is that? I can't believe I fixated on the money part of it, I'm not tight darling, I promise, from now on, what's mine is yours, not that you'll be rich, I warn you, but I was just afraid. I was afraid of your intensity, and the effect it had on me when you looked at me that way. It's so funny, at dinner that night, my birthday, someone asked me what my ideal man would be like. It was only later that I realized I had given an accurate description of you, my love, both physically and mentally. You were what I wanted all along. I was just too overwhelmed by your devotion, and the way that it came like a bolt from the blue. Or maybe I felt that I didn't deserve it, that's always been a problem of mine, and, now that I think about it probably the reason I've ended up with so many losers before. I've never allowed myself to truly love anybody, in case they left me. And now here we are, apart. For who knows how long. No, sorry, Alex, ignore that. I'm trying so hard to think positive, but every now and then I think, what if, and panic. I can't bear the thought of you going to prison for years. But you won't. Like I said, Emily's not evil. She knows you didn't really do it, and she wouldn't let that happen. Even though I know how true it is that hell hath no fury, etc, etc. And I wish she wouldn't have said whatever it was that she's clearly said to Natalie and Simon, they still put the phone down when I tried to ring them. Natalie was quite nasty to me last time I tried, actually. I'm glad they wrote you a note, but it's really not fair that they're blaming me for all this. I'd do anything to get you out of there. And no, in answer to your question, your mum didn't ring me back either. I'm sorry. I think under the circumstances it was good of you to let her know what's going on. I'm going to change the subject now before I drag us both down. Guess what, I got a new job. Reading manuscripts for a hot new literary agent, an ex-editor called Mark Molsey. It's very part-time, which is perfect. I want flexible hours so that I will always be able to visit you, Angel. And I've already sent him your stories and told him about your deal, obviously, and he's keen to represent you for the novel that I know you're going to write. I'm so proud of your writing success. I was jealous at first, but that was before you were part of my life, and also when I thought that I still had ambitions to be a famous author. Reading all these manuscripts for Mark has made me realize that, actually, I am a good writer. And so are you. I've decided that I'm not going to do any more writing for a while though, just give myself a break from the pressure of it. I don't want to write another novel until, or even unless, I get that deep, mad yearning for it. I've learned that you have to really want things in order to deserve them, want them and fight for them, like you did for me. I'm so incredibly touched that you did that for me, after I'd very nearly wrecked everything. I'll sign off now. There's a man coming to clean the carpets, and I have to go and buy Biggles some flea powder, oh the excitement. Anyway, I'll be visiting tomorrow, so this afternoon I'll be baking my Victoria sponge with a file in. Maybe next time will be the time the guards let me through with it. I can't wait to see you, Angel. Every part of me is waiting for you, however long it takes, body and soul.
All my love. Shaban XXX.